Okay, so as I said before, this review basically is going to be just showing you the techniques. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna actually draw a bunch of stuff here and there or an illustration of any sort or post or anything like that. But again, just reviewing the techniques for your second illustration uh, um, assignment. One of the first things that we talked about is making sure you're using layers and then you start creating layers, right? Uh, to put your different objects in all the different layers. So I'm gonna be looking for that. And then you also <laughs> start naming the layers. So when you wanna open up your layers palette, either go to window and then down the layers to open it up, or it'll usually be in one of your palettes here on the side. All right, so I'm gonna double click. And we talked about having your, uh, creating a background layer of some sort in order to change the color of the background. We needed to actually draw a rectangular object to cover that uh, background. So I'm gonna change this into some different color. And as you can see now, we have a green background if we, if we wanted to. Then I create another layer and then I named it the text layer. And I showed you basically that with the text tool, by hitting the uppercase T here, um, that when we do, when you use a text tool, um, keep in mind that you can use your, your um, option bar on the top right here or you can bring up the character palette right up here. Either word is useful, but we know that we want to change, for instance, the font size, maybe to font 60 or something like that, or if we don't see the number like 68, for instance, we can just type it in, in there. Uh, we can look in the option bar also, we can see the different fonts and the diff different type of fonts that we, want, we may want to use. So, I forgot what font I used. Uh, oh, purple black, I think it was. So, again, and if you want to resize the font or change it again, no big deal. Just make sure you select this font, go back to the character palette, and maybe change it to a you know, larger size. Again, you can type in the number you want on there and so on, right? Also, I showed you how to uh, align. Like I said, I want to make sure this is centered. I know that's off-center right now. So if I want to make sure that this is aligned to my background here, okay, to the artboard area, for instance, I can, I can have it do that. So I would need to select my text. I would go to Window, Align, to bring my Align Palette. And then in this case, you'll notice that um, what I want, I could just click align, uh, align to object, but there's no other object that I'm aligning it to. In this case, I wanted to align it to my artboard, so I need to show, uh, I need to go up here and make sure that I show options. Then where it says align to, I'm going to select to align to artboard area, and then I'll click on horizontal, uh, uh, or um, horizontal line center, and that, pretty much gets it where uh, about center where I want to or left aligned. In this case, moving all the way to the other side or to the right side or left side. Okay. Then, uh, as you know, this works like any text object. I can double click on it, uh, delete a letter, add more letters, whatever type thing on there. And as you can see, I can move it around and so on just like any other object. Now, the one thing that we talked about in this case was that we can make this text object into a vector shape object, whereas it stops being character based and then you have, it starts being a vec uh, vector base. So to do that, I'm gonna select the text itself. I'm gonna go to type. Under type, I'm gonna scroll down to create outlines. And you'll notice now that this text is, there's a bunch of anchor points on there. So if I zoom in, I can see those anchor points a little bit better. Remember to, to zoom in is uh, spacebar command key. 
And then if I want to work with each individual object, now it's a vector shape object, I need to select that group of objects and I'm going to go to objects and ungroup. So now that I ungroup them, when I deselect, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and lock that background layer. I can select that layer or that particular text and now I can move it around or I can rotate it as we did with the other one. And so on. And then also using my direct selection tool, as I move on the path, you'll notice it comes into, uh, as I move through it, it will detect that it's a path or an anchor point. So I can select an anchor point, click and drag to change the anchor point. Or I can grab a handle and change the curve and so on, right? So I can move things around with this. Remember, it's an object now. It's no longer, um, it's no longer a text uh, object, but a vector shape object. Okay, so you get the idea in terms of um, taking the anchor points, changing them, and so on. All right, so let's we'll zoom back out here. So the other thing we did, we um, use the pen tool and the pen tool basically I showed you uh, that we can click 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 and create different objects so again we did the mountain real quickly we'll do something like that and the important thing is as I <coughs> click click to go back to the starting point okay and we can again use our direct selection tool to click and select those particular anchor points and move it around if we wanted to and we can take and add anchor points and so on using the pen tool so if I go to the, my pen tool I can add anchor points so at any any given path right there. If I hold down, well, at this point I can click on it, and if I hold down the command key, then it becomes the direct selection tool again. And I can click and drag and continue to add anchor points and just kind of move things around a little bit. Or, if I hold down the option key, I can select from that anchor point. I'm going to undo that. The other thing, the other tool we used uh, was the anchor point tool. And what that does, it allows us to convert corner points into curve points if we wanted to. My suggestion is click and drag to the right, otherwise it becomes a swirl. If I click and drag to the left, this is what happens. So again, click and drag to the right. And we can also change those, those curve points. Here's a curve point. And if I click on it, if it's a curve point, it becomes a corner point. Okay. And so on. Now we also what we did is we applied a gradient. Um, I showed you how to apply a gradient, so I'll do that to that background. I'm going to go ahead and lock this. Actually, you know what I should do is select it and cut it out, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer, put it in that layer, and I'm going to lock it there, and lock the text, and unlock the background. So now I can select the background and I can turn off the layer three, which is my, I call that the mountain. And so now that I, I'll go back and select the background layer, I'm making sure that I've selected the object on that layer. I'm gonna click on the gradient tool that applies that gradient and obviously I don't want it to be this color, then I'll click on the slider, double click on it. Usually when you double click on, you get your swatches palette here. If you don't, check up here, make sure, oops, make sure you have all show options. Um, again, double click on it, and then select a, a color. Blue. 
And as you'll notice right now, it's applied into linear. And I showed you also we can add grade, uh, grading sliders if we wanted to make it a different color or not. You click and drag it out. Just click and drag it down. And we can change this to radial also. Now, once we've changed it to move where it is, we can change the angles here. But notice it doesn't change much if it's radial. Right? If it's linear, yeah, and then we can change the angles in here. But a better way to change that is to use the gradient tool. So I can click and drag and reverse that. Or click and drag, you know, where we start where we start to click first, it will be where it'll place the color gradient on the left. So if I want the color gradient on the left to start at the top, I'm going to click and drag from the top towards the bottom. Okay. And I, as you can see, I can change this to a radial. And same thing, using the same tool, I can move this around. If I wanted to. Back to linear. Click and drag from top to bottom. Okay. So those are the tools that you can use to manipulate the gradient. All right, so I'm going to lock the gradient now, uh, go back to the mountain, turn it back on, and I'll select the mount, the mount itself, we apply the gradient to that, <clears throat> change the colors. So then the other thing we did, um, that I showed you guys in terms of, okay, so we use the pen tool. Um, oh, right. In terms of using the pen tool itself, so now I'm just going to kind of quickly do a little, just basically in terms of the technique of using the pen tool, creating curves, and then also how to, you know, create different objects with using the pen tool. So I'm just going to move the over, this over to the side a little bit. All right, so with the pen tool, as I said, when you're trying to do a curve going up, you're going to click and drag up. And in CS or CC, you can see already where the curve is going to go. You can't see that, by the way, on CSX and lower version. So notice when I click and drag down, and it starts to fill it, by the way. All right, and Again, you can wind up doing this little type loop thing just by clicking and dragging up or clicking and dragging down, right? But you don't always want an object like that. Sometimes you want to have all your curves going up. So that means that then you have to change the anchor point in terms of being a curve point to a corner point. So I'm going to click and drag up because I want my curve to go up. Then I'm going to click and drag down. Now I want to continue with another curve going up. So that means I'm going to click on that anchor point. So now I'm changing that curve point to a corner point. Now I can click and drag down, and then I get a curve going up. Same thing here. And notice if I want to end it right here, it'll go ahead and create a curve unless I click on that anchor point, then I come it to this point and close it out. Okay. So that's one solution. Which, by the way, um, for instance, if you can combine straight line segments with the pen tool, with the curve uh, tool, doing the same technique. So, give me an example here. So if I start with a straight line segment, you know, click, click, but then I want to go to a curve, notice I can just click and drag up. But then if I want to continue with a straight line segment, notice I can't continue with a straight line segment. If I click here, it can raise the curve. So what I need to do is click on that path and then, or I'm sorry, on that anchor point, then I can create another straight line segment. 
And if I, then I can continue on if I wanted to with a curve just by clicking and dragging. Now you can't see that line segment because it's a different color, but notice if I click here and then close it here, and then you can see how we have that combination of straight line segments with curves. So it's just a matter when you want to combine curves and straight line segments is to click on that corner point or click and drag and see what happens. If it doesn't happen, you can always undo and just click on that um, anchor point. All right. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. So the other thing we did is um, I, sh I showed you how to use the Shape Builder tool. So we did a combination of things. We started off with a rectangle, for instance. We combined shapes. So if I wanted to combine these three shapes, So now we have one, two, three different shapes, right? So I want to combine them to one whole shape using the Shape Builder tool. I could do that. So with the Shape Builder tool, I can click on it, click on the object, or clip on, uh, click on the, um, well, excuse me. First, I have to select all three. Then I'm going to select the Shape Builder tool. And you'll notice I can add to it by, you know, by just clicking on it and then clicking and dragging and it adds part of that object. You see, so I can continue to add. And all I have to do is just click and drag all the way down and it makes it into one whole object. I also showed you how to subtract from it. We did the tire, if you remember. So I have one object here and then I drew another object. So I'm going to create a hole in this larger circle using this object right here. So using a Shape Builder tool, you're going to have to select both of them. Notice like if I were to just click on this, it would be, you know, if I click and drag, it would be one, it would become one whole object. What I want to do is subtract from it. So I have a hole in the middle of this um, other circle. Again, and then you can use that to subtract different parts of an object. So all I have to do is hold on the Option key, and I can click on it, and then just creates a hole. Because basically, I've used it as a cutting tool. So I use the shape as a cutting tool to cut something away.